But I've got, I, I've got a question for all these folks who say, you know, we're going to pu pull the plug on grandma and this is all about illegal immigrants and y you've heard all the, all the lies. I've, 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 got, I've, I've, got, I've got a question for all those folks. What's, what are you going to do? What's your answer? What's your solution? And you know what? They don't have one. Well, we'll oh, see yeah? about that. Uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich has a plan, and he's the founder of, uh, of the Center for Health Transformation and Speaker of the House, of course, former Speaker of the House, joining us live from D.C. I heard that, Mr. Speaker, and I thought, thank goodness you're on our show today. Can you answer the president? Because he didn't invite you uh, there on the podium. What's your answer? What's your plan? Look, all he's got to do is go to healthtransformation.net. We've outlined a series of changes, start with litigation reform to save doctors and defensive medicine, billions of dollars in savings. Second, go to Stop Paying the Crooks, which is the title of a new book by Jim Frog at the Center for Health Transformation. It shows how we could save between 70 and $120 billion a year in Medicaid and Medicare uh, just by stopping to pay people who are, who are basically stealing the money. Third, uh, move to prevention and wellness, uh, and, and lower the cost by keeping people healthy. Here. Fourth, go to best practices such as the, um, the the programs that we see at Gunderson Lutheran in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where you have a doctor-centered, family-centered model of an advanced directive. You don't have government rationing and government bureaucrats, and yet it's very effective and it provides the lowest cost last two years of life in America with very high satisfaction by the family that their dignity is protected. So the president yesterday gave, I think, a, an unfortunate speech. I know. It was a candidate speech, not a president's speech. Mm -hmm. And I think it weakened him going into tomorrow night. What do you think the president will do tomorrow night? Well, I don't know what he will do, but I told Mrs. Clinton back in 1993 that it was impossible to pass a 1,300-page comprehensive health bill with 50,000 pages of regulations and 46 new agencies. That's what they're trying to do. And I would hope that the president would back off, suggest that maybe we should pass five or six bills, each of them 200 or 150 pages, manageable, understandable, do it out in the open, do it in a bipartisan way. But if he comes back tomorrow night and tries yeah. to ram through a massive bill, uh, I suspect in the end it will fail, just as it failed in 1994. You know, math-wise, Newt, uh, he's got the votes. He's got plenty of votes in the House. He's got plenty of votes in the Senate. And yet he's got this intra-party fight with the uh, ultra-leftists in his party who say, unless there's a public option, all 60 of us are taking a hike, Mr. President. Look, no president, not Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was the greatest politician of the 20th century, not Ronald Reagan, who was extraordinarily effective, no president has the votes if they lose the American people. That's right. And over the last two months, the American people have said again and again, you've covered it, town hall meetings, polling data, uh, the outcry against a government-run uh, bureaucratic health system has been overwhelming and if the president sticks with that he may make his left happy but I think he will enrage the American people who will conclude that he's not listening to him that he's not paying mm -hmm. attention sure. to all this evidence